How far is Palouse Falls? Uh, it's a pretty good way, ways from here. My guess would be it's about 90 miles. And how fast does this fly? So it would take us about an hour and a half to get down there. Have you ever flown over it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a great area to fly, fly around. <laughs> Cindy has quite a way of changing the flight plan on you in the middle of the flight, doesn't she? Welcome, folks, to a flight down to Palouse Falls, located in south-central Washington State. Even from outer space, at this satellite image, you can see the track of the Great Ice Age floods that ravaged this area 14 to 28,000 years ago. We're going to take off out of Spokane, Washington, and fly about 90 miles southwest down to Palouse Falls, which is located just north of the Snake River. So why don't you strap into the trike and come along with us? It should be a good flight. This is just a crazy drainage here, isn't it? It's the start of Hankman Valley. And a lot of people don't know it, but this was all filled up with a lake during the Ice Age. That lake went all the way through. It filled up all of Spokane, Spokane Valley, north. Uh, what is now Roosevelt Lake, it backed all up in there. If you would have looked at it from the sky, this whole thing would have looked like one big giant lake including Lake uh, Coeur d'Alene. I'm not referring here to the great glacial Lake Missoula that supplied all the floodwaters for the Ice Age floods, but instead I'm referring to Glacial Lake Columbia, which was cut off by the Okanagan Lobe and dammed up near what is now Grand Coulee, Washington. This lake backed up into the Spokane Valley, into the Coeur d'Alene Channel and Coeur d'Alene Lakes, up to within just a few miles of the ice dam near Pend Oreille, Idaho. And then when the ice dam broke up at Pend Oreille, this place was just inundated with water. It just swelled up and pushed out in that direction. So everything you see out here that's trees is generally where the floodwaters went. I marvel at the water that carved this specific canyon just north of Bonnie Lake. It had to be, in my estimate, close to 600 feet deep and moving at nearly 70 miles an hour. So it cut in these really deep channels is about level where you, where you see the tree lines on each side. This is where the water was and you can see here the depth of it was pretty deep. Uh, okay so here is this is our Ice Age flood so we've got this wall of water coming through here. Much of it's going that way out towards Sprague Lake but a, a, a branch of it came off through here and as it barreled through here it, it channeled into this gully you see here. Is that part of the Missoula floods? That's part of the Missoula Fudge. As the floodwaters raced into this region, it followed a simple creek drainage, which left behind a huge gouge in the Earth's surface. So, these circular things you see are called potholes. A lot of them are dry, but some of them are still wet. And what it is, is the water is so deep and moving so fast, it creates an underground underwater vortice or a tornado. There's another one. And um, as it's moving through, this tornado is sitting there just idling in one spot. It's pulling the rock out and sending it downstream. It forms these big circles called potholes. And what is this called, this area? Well, th this right here is Bonnie Lake, and it's going to feed into Rock Lake. See, the fault lines through here in the bedrock go go this way. They, they start over there and they kind of sweep through this way. And that's why the lines are generally going this way. But the water is blowing this way. Isn't that weird? And it came in and it gouged out this uh, rock lake. And that rock lake is over 400 foot deep. So all this water that's really blowing through here, it's hard for me to grasp the volume of water. But uh, when it came down to the southern end here, you can see it opens up, it fans way out. And uh, so that whole area out there was, uh, you know, just fanned out into that whole area. So this is like a chute, a choke point, where the velocity must have just been outrageously strong, carving out this lake and this gorge. As we continue past Rock Lake heading southwest, the area broadens and the landscape becomes noticeably different. It's referred to as Scamp Land 
because as the waters uh, slowed in velocity and spread out, they found their own different channels south down towards Palouse River and eventually the Snake River. As the water moved through this region, it's easy to see the tracks that they took and how it carved through the Los Hills on their way towards the Snake River. A lot of mounds. You look down here, you can kind of you can kind of see them here. I'm going to show you a better example of them, but they're called Mima, Mima mounds. It's indicative of areas that the Ice Age floods uh, water level was at. It might have even been on this guy's property, maybe not. These Mima mounds formed after the floodwaters had passed and can be found all over the Scabland region. While they're not unique to the floodwater area itself, it's still debated today what exactly causes these things to form. Now this is all what they refer to as scab land. When the settlers came out, they were all looking for the really good stuff, you know? And then they would find tracks of this, which they referred to as useless or scab land. And the name stuck, so that's what they refer to this country as, the scab lands. Well, yeah, you can't even grow anything. Nope, just worthless ground. Well, that's just it. You, you know, you can graze cattle in there. And, you know, they found a use for it. But anywhere in the state of Washington, here in eastern Washington, where you see exposed rock, that's very indicative of flood uh, features. And... Uh, and you are standing in an area that was affected by the Ice Age floods. This is just one little track in the state. If we jumped over south of Sprague and Moses Lake and all the way over to uh, the Columbia Gorge, there's all this, these tracks just like this that is scab land. You don't see it from the highway because highways don't go through it. What's worth repeating here is if you are in eastern Washington and you see exposed rock, you are very likely looking at the erosional effects of the Ice Age floods. And you're not really aware of uh, the fact that this stuff exists. And you can see as that water was flowing down towards Tri-Cities, here it's split and there's arms that go off that way, arms that go off in front of us, and uh, we'll follow a little track here down to Colfax um, which is pretty interesting, and we'll uh, we'll see where it dumps into the Palouse River. We're kind of get, making our way to Palouse Falls, aren't we? I've never been there. I know you go to Colfax and then head toward Washtucna or something. Yeah, it's Washtucna near Connell, and uh, then you drive out into the middle of nowhere. This is a satellite image of the area just north of Palouse Falls, and that's Highway 26 you see there skirting alongside the Palouse River. As the floodwaters barreled in from the north, it inundated this region under hundreds of feet of water from the surface of the earth. It chiseled in and carved in these unique features and coolies, and canyons, and erosional patterns that could only be indicative of a huge, massive, catastrophic flood. As we fly over this area, the landscape appears to me to be something completely from a whole different world. It sort of looks like the ground is melting into itself as these various coolies and canyons were formed along various fault lines that created these unique lines and angles in the topography. The result was we just had to dive in and explore some of these features. So we are uh, six miles out from uh, Palouse Falls. It's right on our nose, so it's out there somewhere. And it was formed when all this water came together from over there and this way. And hit here, it created these coolies like this one right here. This whole place was inundated with water. Looks like it came and then flipped over and went down that way. Oh, it did, because uh, if we were here during the flood, this whole area would just look like a big lake moving that direction. As we fly through some of these coolies, 
Keep in mind the water level of these floods was hundreds of feet above our head. So as you look through here, these are all channels that were formed underneath the water. The water surface was above this whole area. You just see nothing but a big lake here. But this, it's moving so quickly, just carving up and putting in all these different features. Look at this coolie right here. I mean, how else does that form? It's called a coolie? Yeah. yeah, a coolie is a box-shaped canyon that's formed. It's specific to the Ice Age floods. A coolie, so that's why everything is coolie around here. Palouse River used to go down that valley, that channel, and the Ice Age uh, floods took out this channel here, and we'll fly that coming out, uh, and it redirected Palouse uh, River down this way and created Palouse Falls. Prior to the Ice Age floods, the Palouse River flowed completely east to west through this image, through what is now the Washtukna Coulee. But as the floodwaters barreled into this region, it cut out this long straight coulee, which redirected the modern day route of the Palouse River down to Palouse Falls. The reason this coulee is so straight is because it follows a fracture in the basalt bedrock below. And just west of this part of Palouse River, and through an area that you'll drive through to get to Palouse Falls, are these older and more weathered coolies that you'll get a chance to see and explore. Finally, after exploring a number of features people normally don't get a chance to see when they visit this area, we descended in on Palouse Falls itself. Palouse Falls plummets 186 feet into an obviously oversized plunge pool that was not formed by this river itself. As I fly through the canyon south of Palouse Falls towards the Snake River, I can't help but think. It's now estimated over a hundred floods barreled through the eastern Washington region, and with each successive flood, it moved the waterfalls miles up this canyon from the Snake River to where the falls are today. And when those floodwaters reached this area of the Snake River, it sent a surge of backflow over 100 miles upstream to what is now Kuski, Idaho and miles up Hell's Canyon.
So if you decide to come visit Palouse Falls, and you stand on the ledge there looking down in the basin where the waterfalls are at, and you understand that where you're standing, the water levels were hundreds of feet above your head, you can extrapolate that into imagining what happened in Spokane or Lake Roosevelt or the Moses Lake area or even the Columbia Gorge. Maybe it'll inspire you to take a trip down to Wallula Gap. And if you're in Wallula Gap, imagine some of these bigger floods going completely over the gap. Then you'll begin to understand the scope and the magnitude of these massive floods that occurred 14 to 28,000 years ago. And you know what the kicker is? There's more ice ages on the way. And who knows, maybe there'll be more floods as well. bird's eye view of the Ice Age floods. And now you know the whole story. I don't want to drive now. I'd rather fly over it. <laughs> now I'm spoiled.